Welcome back. It is just before 7 a.m. in the morning, and today I'm going to try to drive my electric motorcycle, my Zero, to the National Motorcycle Museum. I've never taken a trip like this with this bike, and I will not be able to make it there without charging. So I will have to charge at least two times, and this is something that I've never done. So I'm going to see how practical is it to take a trip on an electric motorcycle and for those of you that live in a city, that might be an easy task, but I live here in the middle of nowhere, and the museum is about 30 minutes outside of Cedar Rapids. And as far as I can tell, between me and the museum, there is only two towns with an electric charger. I've never plugged the motorcycle into a public charger, so I don't know how long it's going to take to charge. So today, we're going to find out a lot of answers. If you haven't seen any of the videos on my bike before, my bike is a Zero SR. And currently, I have it at 100% charge. And it says I can go 114 miles. We'll make note the odometer right now is 1,504 miles. So we'll see how far I get in between charges. And the other thing to note, today it is going to be very hot. It's already 80 degrees Fahrenheit out. And it'll probably be around 100 today so we might lose a bunch of range due to the excessive heat it's going to be a long day so i better get on the road Right now I am at 50% battery and I still have a 70 mile range so I'm getting a lot more miles than I thought I was going to and that's because I'm doing a few things to save my battery. One is I've set the cruise control which I think is a very big thing because I noticed that when the cruise control is set I, it will regen the battery when I'm going down hills. And also by using the cruise control, I can set it so that I'm not speeding and going faster than I should be. And the last thing that I'm doing is keeping conscious that I need to conserve my battery. So I'm trying to make myself as aerodynamic as possible uh, when I can do it. So if I can just tuck down and relax, then I'll do that and try to make myself more aerodynamic. So we have a 70 mile range. It looks like currently there is 73 miles to the motorcycle museum. So I'm definitely not going to make it. And my best bet is to turn down into Cedar Rapids and try to find a charger there. Today I'm going to try to use this app ChargePoint to try to find my chargers. There's a bunch available in Cedar Rapids. If we come over to Anamosa, where the museum is, there's really nothing around. So I will have to get all my charging done in Cedar Rapids. So I'll try to charge there, go over to Anamosa where the museum is, and then come back to Cedar Rapids to charge for the trip home. Looks like there's a big cluster of chargers right here, so that's my best bet. And I'm gonna make my way onto there, see if any of these are available to use. Looks like I have 52 miles to go, so I hope my range is correct. Otherwise, I'm going to get stuck. Let's hit the road and see what happens.
Well, I stopped real quick at a traditional gas station to get some water, some food, in case there's nothing around the charging station. Right now, the battery is down to 18% and I have a 24 mile range. And the navigation says I have 13 miles to go, so I hope the range on this is correct. I'm currently at 9% and I have 13 miles left I can go. I did make it to a charger, however, it is on private property in an industrial area. I do have a little tree right here where I can get a little bit of shade. Unfortunately, currently it's 87 degrees Fahrenheit out right now, but I need a charge, so I'm going to try and see if I can charge the bike up here. Well, I'm plugged in, We're up to 2.8 kilowatts. Okay, it is charging, but not very quickly. It says it's going to be four hours to completely charge this. I'll let it run. Hopefully it gets faster. I'm glad that I stopped and got some snacks and drinks. Got a Gatorade. Got a beef stick and some cheese. Just keep me busy for a little bit. While I sit here and wait for the bike to charge, I thought I would go over why I am making this trip to the National Motorcycle Museum. Well, unfortunately, the guy in charge of the museum has passed away. And the museum was sold to Revzilla. Revzilla has decided just to liquidate the museum and sell everything off. So Mecham is having an auction where they are going to sell all the great bikes that the museum owns. And as you can see by this massive lot list, the museum had a lot of motorcycles. It's unfortunate that the museum is going to be closing. I have been to the museum before, but I have never made a video from the museum. So I thought I would make a trip out here one more time and document what's left of the museum before it closes. I have been planning on using my electric motorcycle for this trip just to make it a little more interesting, but I did not want to do it on a 100 degree day, but I only have a couple weeks left before the museum closes. So if I didn't do it now, I wasn't ever going to get it done. Okay, I am up to 53% battery. I have 72 miles that I can go. It is only 23 miles to get to the museum. So I have three times as much as I need to get to the museum, which will at least get me back here or to a different charging site. But for now, let's hit the road and get over to the museum. Looks like the museum closing is good for business right now. I've never seen this many people here before. I see these Vander Halls from time to time, but usually I don't see two of them together. Nice Royal Enfield right here in front. Looks like they have the militaries out here. Harleys, Indians, BMWs, BSAs. Tired. Oh, 
You'll see tags on all the bikes because everything is going up for sale. When I visited this museum before, there were a lot of bikes that were on display given by other people, but I think those have all been removed by now. And everything left here is going up for sale. I believe these are replicas of the Easy Rider bikes, not the originals. Nice display of Vespa scooters. And Cushman, as well as a Lambretta. Apparently this scooter is called a Salisbury. Never seen one of these before. Really neat looking. Here's a doodle bug. These were manufactured here in Iowa. Pretty popular locally. Not sure if they are known very much anywhere else in the world. This is probably the most incredible thing here. This is the road dog. When I first learned about this on the internet, I became obsessed with it. This is the real thing. Here's an Allstate motorcycle. These were sold from the Sears catalog. Well, according to the sign on the floor, we're going to find the best of the best in here. This is an 11 16 scale model, a working model. Thank you. 
There's just so much here. I'm not going to be able to show you everything. But I'll try to pick out some of my favorite stuff. This is a good representation of what racing on a board track would have looked like. There were many board tracks around the Midwest in my area. Here's a Sunbeam S7, just like my red one. This one is painted green. Black was also a very popular color for these. This one is a 1919 Rudge Multi Gear. It looks like there's a bunch of detents right here. This probably varies the width of the belt drive there, giving you different speeds. So it looks like there's about 15 or 20 different speeds that you could select there by changing the gear ratio of your belt drive. Looks like I found at least one bike now that is actually here still on loan. This Bruff Superior is also on loan. Pick up. 
Now here we have a 1929 Morgan Arrow. I had a 1929 as well as a 1932. However, I sold them because there's not really any place close to me that I could ride it to and use it. I would have to trailer it everywhere and I just enjoy driving my vehicles more. So And here we found a steam motorcycle built in 1934. Yeah. I have a couple more cycle cars. This one only has a single headlamp in the front. This Crouch is apparently the oldest motorcycle that Steve McQueen ever owned. This one is a replica, but it is a replica of an 1867 steam cycle. Here we have a Harley Davidson powered ice boat. Appears to be made mostly of tin. Inside, just a steering wheel and an on and off switch. This Harley powered car is made from 14 different cars. Looks like the base might be a Crosley Hot Shot or something similar to that. There's so many pieces from different cars that it's hard to tell what it's made from. They even chopped up the dashboard from something. This is a replica of the world's first real motorcycle from 1885. Here's a map of all the people that have visited here from everywhere in the world. And another map for the United States. I'm glad that I have come back to the Motorcycle Museum before it has closed. However, it is now 94 degrees out and I have a long way to get back home. I hope on the way back I can find a charging station with some shelter, maybe some air conditioning. Well, surprise, I am back at the original charging station.
I wanted to at least come here and get some charge before I try to make a plan to move somewhere else because I know that this station works. I'm finding out that I don't have range anxiety, but I do have charger anxiety. I can easily plan my routes not to run out of range, but there's no way of telling what condition the charger is going to be in and if it's even there. And that is the worst thing about driving an electric vehicle. Not knowing where the charger stations are going to be, if they even exist, and what you're going to find when you get there. Just on the other side of the parking lot from where I am charging the motorcycle is a bunch of stores and restaurants and convenience centers. So I'm going to get something to eat and drink. Then we can get back on the road, see if we can find a charger about halfway between here and home. Well, it's better than nothing. Well, that was nice. They had Wi-Fi and air conditioning. So making my way back to the motorcycle now. It's 72 miles to the next town with a charger. And I will have to stop there in order to make it home. Looks like I am going to be living here with a 77% charge and a 98 mile range. This should be enough to make it to the next town. Let's check the status real quick. I got here, my range is 27 more miles and my state of charge is 21%. My mileage is now 1752. Well, this is what I was afraid of running into. It does not want to charge. It's connected, it says not charging. I made sure that the scheduled charging is not on. I guess I'll try the other side. Okay, it looks like it's working now. I just switched so that I'm plugged into the other side. This place is a lot more barren than the last place was. It's basically a little parking lot surrounded by houses and basically nothing else. Nowhere to buy anything. Okay, I'm going to call it right here, 46 miles of range. That should be about eight extra miles that should be a good buffer to make it home. Wish me luck.
I made it. I'm back where I started. I don't have the math right now, so I'm going to put it here on the bottom of the screen. I rode for this many miles. I charged this many kilowatts, which took me this long to charge, which cost me this much. And that's going to be it for today. If you want to see more electric vehicle or more motorcycle content, comment below and click subscribe. At least it is cooled off. You can't tell it by the screen. I don't know why I can't focus on it right now. I did put a new screen protector on the screen and that might be screwing with it. But it's 82 degrees Fahrenheit. I have seven miles of range left. My battery is at 6% and the mileage is 1,792. I'll see you next time.